Welcome back to another thing. Recently, researchers at John Hopkins found that the death rate from cervical cancer is higher than first estimated. To talk more about that is Dr. Darlene Gibbon, who is a uh, gynecologic oncologist at the Summit Medical Group. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, what do you make of this new research? So I think it's important to realize that the researchers looked at the data that currently existed and through recognizing that women who had already undergone hysterectomies were no longer at risk for developing cervical cancer because their cervixes had been removed, they re-analyzed um, the data. And as a consequence of that, the death rate from cervical cancer was higher than was originally estimated to be. And what they also found in the research is that the incidents among African-American women were higher. Right, and we always recognize that women of color, either Hispanic women or um, black women, were at a higher risk of having cervical cancer than, than Caucasian women. White Why women. is that, do we know? They really aren't sure. Um, there's a concern that perhaps women are not being screened in the same fashion um, and therefore are being diagnosed with cancers at a later stage. There may be also an issue that um, the number of hysterectomies performed in, in African American women may be higher than that seen with um, Caucasian women. And so part of this is also a an estimation. This is, it, this is not um, hardcore statistics, but this is is what the best that we can do with the data that we have at hand. And with proper screening, according to the article from the New York mm -hmm. Times about the, about the study, it could all but be prevented cervical cancer. You're right. You know, unfortunately, women uh, don't always realize the significance of undergoing screening or making that doctor's appointment. It's very difficult to take time out of their busy schedules, but it is critical. And it's not only the importance of screening, but also we have a wonderful um, tool in the HPV or the human papillomavirus vaccine that actually allows us to intervene or prevent HPV infections, which is the one of the primary causes of developing cervical cancer. Glad you brought it up. That was the next cancers. topic I was going to get to. I'm glad you brought it up because I have a 12 year old. We're at that point where he's supposed mm -hmm. to get the HPV shot and I was surprised. I didn't know enough about it. I'll, I'll be honest. And I was surprised to hear all these mothers saying, no, 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 my son, my daughter is not getting that shot. Is there pushback? I think unfortunately there is and I'm, I'm not really sure 100% why. And I, I think it's critically important that we recognize that many cancers are increasing because of these human papillomavirus infections, which are uh, is, is the most common sexually transmitted infection and in the, the problem. world. That's the problem. I think that I really believe that parents are saying at a, as 12 years old, my son doesn't need that, my daughter doesn't right. need that, She's not, she or he's not gonna be that sexually active. And they are 100% correct, but the problem is, is that we recognize that the efficacy of the vaccine is the greatest in younger children. So if you, vac if you vaccinate children at the age of 11 and 12, they have a better re response to the vaccination than if you vaccinated in them at 15, 16, 17, 20. What are the statistics right now? Who are, are enough people getting the shot? No, unfortunately they're not. What they've actually found is that it's much lower than that. It's approximately 42% for girls and approximately 28% uh, for boys. And that actually led, um, last year, the NCI designated cancer centers across the country um, got together and as a group actually released a statement supporting and encouraging individuals to vaccinate their children against HPV infections. And I think it's, um, you know, it's important to recognize that there are these other, you know, forms of cancer that we don't always think about. One of the highest groups or the, uh, right now, increase in head and neck cancer, HPV related head and neck cancers have increased significantly or are rising at a greater rate than cancers of the head and neck that are due to cigarette smoking. So I think it's critical that we actually intervene. Thank you, doctor. Thank Dr. You Darlene much. Gibbon from the Summit Medical Group. When we return. Still to come on another thing, in search of missing persons, Dawn meets the heroes who are on the front line.